Welcome back to our Ask a Knitter series where I answer common questions that I get asked in my knitting classes. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at set-in sleeves. Now, what you're seeing here is obviously a particular type of set-in sleeve, which is their seamless top-down set-in sleeves. But I'll also kind of talk through how the construction of a, an actual, I suppose, a non-seamless or a sewn-in set-in sleeve works as well. If you want to learn a little bit more about this, then jump, jump in. And if you want to ensure that you don't miss any in this Ask a Knitter series, make sure that you subscribed as well. But for now, let's get started. A set and sleeve is often what people think of when they think of seamed construction. And with that, you're going to have a garment. I'll just do something very straightforward like this, where you'll have, this is the width of the shoulders here. Then you've got a little bit of shaping at the underarm, like this. And then the body is going to be knit, shaped or not shaped. Then the armhole here, you've got two options. Either if you're doing it where it's in pieces, what you'll construct is a sleeve knitted flat, which is going to be something like this. This is the cuff, comes up to the underarm here. And then you will have what's kind of an hourglass shape, some, something like that. This looks more like a mushroom than an hourglass, um, where this will be sewn into the outer edge of this. The other way that I do it more frequently is I pick up stitches all the way around here then do short rows back and forth to curve the top of the sleeve cap and then at that point join in the round. But uh, set in sleeves like this are one of my favorites because you can get the shoulders to match by measuring the shoulders and making that the width you need. You can adjust the number of increases you need to get the bust size you want and you can create extra length or extra width at the top of the sleeve very easily by adjusting the sleeve cap up here. So it means that if you've got narrower or wider shoulders, you can adjust that. If you want more width at the bust, you can create that, or you can change the actual size of the upper arm. So set in sleeves are one of the most modifiable types of construction that you can do, particularly if you want to make a lot of changes to the shape of the garment as you're, as you're knitting it. My so. preferred method of doing set and sleeves is seamlessly. So for the most part, I prefer top-down construction. Sometimes it's not absolutely always the case, but generally speaking, it would be my preferred method. With top-down construction with set and sleeves, it opens up the possibility of actually being able to use short rows and picking up stitches so that you get a much easier, it's, it's an approximation of the set and sleeve, but it's much easier to work and most people are much happier with the, the outcome that they have with that. Now it can also, even if you've done a standard body where you've got it in pieces and you seam it in, you can actually use this particular type of construction um, within to do a top down for the sleeve afterwards. Because once you've got the armhole opening, you'll just be working from the top down rather than the bottom up and sewing it in. Now, in the previous lesson, I've been talking about saddle shoulder construction and talking about the fact that saddle shoulder construction, you can use any kind of armhole opening. So that's why I've actually still got the saddle shoulder one here because the armhole opening below the saddle is in fact a set and sleeve, a top down set and sleeve. So don't leave the saddle confuse you. That just forms the top part of your set and sleeve. The one I'm wearing here is Luan and it is a top-down set and sleeve where it's picked up. So for this one, you're picking up all the way around. For the one over here, where it's a saddle shoulder, you have some of the stitches at the top here are already live, and you'd be picking up stitches here, working on those live stitches, and then picking up on the other side. So to do a short row sleeve, what you've got is, you're going to have the top section of stitches. Usually if it's a saddle, you'll use those ones. Otherwise it will be maybe like a quarter of the stitches across the top, which forms the very top of that bell curve if you're doing your, your sewn set and sleeve. And then what you will do is you're working back and forth. You're not doing any decreases because you want all the stitches for your upper arm. You work back and forth and you're gonna do a short row on each side, working one more stitch each time. So you end up with really, really tightly packed short rows. And what that is going to do, let me pull this out here. What that's going to do is it's going to frame, it's going to create this curve down here. It curves all the way down here. So all of these, there's actually a line down along here. And I'll often use wrap and turn short rows. They're not one of my preferred short row 
techniques under normal circumstances. But for this, it actually works quite nicely because you don't have to pick up the wrap. Because you're doing the short row, every row down, those wraps will form almost like a seam line down the side and actually look quite attractive. So you can use wrap and turn. I have sometimes also used German short row. I kind of alternate back and forth between them, depending on the mood, but they both work. Um, but wrap and turn, leaving the wraps in works really well. So you'll start them on each side of the saddle. You come all the way down and then you finish them kind of just as you reach the underarm area. So that's forming this lovely smooth curve down there. Then you join in the round and you can work your sleeve from the top down. So there's two funny things when you're doing this. So when you pick up stitches for your saddle all the way around, because the shape, this is going to be deeper than your sleeve is round. So if you've got perhaps like uh, you're not going to have an armhole depth of less than about seven inches it would be like for the smallest sizes that's about as small as it would go but for the upper arm it's probably only going to be about 12 inches so when you're just ignoring all the underarm but just looking at the depth seven by seven is 14 but your upper arm is 12 so that immediately but we, the amount of stitches you want down here is going to be upper arm stitches so you're actually spacing out your stitches and you're not picking up a true length pick up stitch ratio that you normally would so in fact most of the time it's about one stitch for every two rows which is really widely spaced first time i did it i felt like i was doing something wrong i was a little concerned about it and as i started knitting the short row sleeve cap it suddenly made sense because the, sh the the short rows add so much extra fabric here that it doesn't pucker because all you're doing is back and forth adding all of that extra fabric around the top of the sleeve which means that it can actually accommodate a much wider spacing of picked up stitches than you normally would have in your knitting. So I know that sounds a little bit strange, but it's one of those ones where I would kind of encourage you to give it a shot and see what it looks like, because on paper it looks a bit strange, but then as you actually start picking it up and knitting, it comes together and you're like, oh, this makes a lot more sense now. So it is definitely one you need to try to see what it looks like in that I suppose tied with that as well is if you want to actually swap something from bottom up flat to in the round you also what you're taking a look at is you want to take a look at the upper arm and how many stitches you need for that and that will be the number of stitches you pick up around the armhole opening you can also try it on as you go so you can actually add more short rows if you need to keep going if you want to make sure it curves fully this also actually opens up the possibility of doing a really cute little short row sleeve cap because if you've picked up around here and you go as far as there for like a summer top, you can just do a bind off around it and you've just got a really nice little short row sleeve cap. Very easy way of doing it and it requires pretty minimal calculations in order to actually to, to work it. So these type of top down set and sleeves really open up the possibilities of all of the things that you can do with your knitting. Um, so if you're curious about some of our patterns, pop into the Stone Stitches website and just click under set in sleeves and you will see all of the patterns I've designed that would use set in sleeve. Um, I do seamless, some of them may have be bottom up, some may be top down, but I'm, I'm going to almost go on a limb here and say, I'd say that 99.9% .9 of them are top down with short row sleeve shaping. So that's, you're fairly sure that that's going to be the case uh, because I generally don't do a sewn set and sleeve. For the most part, it wouldn't be my preferred technique. Um, so give it a shot, try it out on the edge of a swatch if you're curious what it looks like, but do give it a try because it is a really nice way of shaping a set and sleeve. Thank you for watching our video today in our Ask a Knitter series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to ensure that you don't miss any in this series, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. And coming up next, we're going to take a look at slightly more unusual types of construction. So follow on for the next video in the series. And thank you for watching.